Saturday night baseball coming up from Guaranteed Rate Field in the Windy City. Tonight, it's a compelling matchup of two division leaders between the New York Yankees and the Chicago White Sox. Glaber Torres, an early contender for the home run crown, takes the field next. Ronaldo Lopez, a right-handed native of the Dominican Republic, will be the starter. What do you have for us on him, Danny? Hey, Matt, this guy keeps his team in the ball game. He's won two of his last three starts, so he's been throwing the ball really well. And one of the keys for this guy is getting early outs to keep his pitch count down. If he can do that, he should be able to get into the seventh or eighth inning in this one here today. And now, Jorge Polanco. And we are set for baseball here this evening. And guys should take a look at the White Sox entering play here tonight. They come in not exactly setting the world on fire as they've dropped five of their last eight ball games. Yeah Matty I know they've caught a little bit of a losing streak right now but they got good veteran presence great veteran presence in that clubhouse and I bet you someone steps up today and says this stops we get it done today boys. Weather shouldn't be much of a factor 71 degrees here at game time runs up and gets this one down but a foul ball one and two now and he fouls this one off hey last two pitches back to back off speed then he's late on the fastball he could pretty much do anything he wants right here on the mound and a good pitch there as this is swung on and missed for the first out of the ball game not a second That'll bring in Giovanni Urshela head to head with Ronaldo Urshela. Lopez. He's got one hit in 16 tries. Sends that one out of play for strike one. One out nobody on. That misses wide one ball and one strike. Urshela 30 years of age. He's a veteran of seven years at the major league level. Pulled high in the air out to left field. Jimenez is going to get there as he backs up to put it away. And there are two gone now. Next up will be Glaber Torres. He was swinging a hot bat in the first half and currently finds himself in second place in the league's home run standings. And I don't expect him to slow down anytime soon, Matty. He sees himself in second place right here. He wants to get hot and overtake that top spot. Into the corner and slicing foul. Looked like he was cheating a heater right there. A little bit too far out in front. Got to find a way to keep his hands back. Now a good pitch around the knees, but it doesn't quite catch the bottom of the zone. Hit hard to short. And that finds its way through for a base hit. Nice A.B. right there. A little potential for some two-out lightning. That getting a cleanup hitter to the dish after the first two batters of the inning were retired. And that'll bring up Aaron Judge as he takes a fastball off the plate for a ball 1-0. Torres is off of first with two away. Two and oh. Two and one after the foul ball there. Well, somebody's sitting off speed right here. Only way he was late on that heater is he was expecting another changeup to two and two now if the offense didn't already know man on the mound's got his a game fastball working today fouled away did well just to make contact there as he spoils off a good changeup. The 2-2 one more time. Ball hit on the ground for Anderson at short. 
fielded cleanly. The toss will go to Vostella at second, and the force out means the inning is over. One left for the Yankees. On to the home half now. Yankees nothing. White Sox coming up. More baseball after this on MLB Network. Jamison Tyon is ready to go as he'll be on the mound for the Yanks. Dan Plezak, what do you got? Hey, one of the strengths of this guy is handling right handed hitters. Right handers coming into this game are hitting under 250 against this guy, so he's doing a lot of things right when the right handers step into the batter's box. Stepping up is Tim Anderson. Well, He'll lead things well, off here right in the side. bottom half of the first. Not shortstop. Tim. Now here's Anderson. the pitch. And a first pitch swing. He hits a fly ball to left center. Frazier a range to his left as he tracks this one down in left center for the first out. Batting second. The second baseman. Tommy. La Into Stella. the box. Tommy LaStella. He's looking to get things going at the plate. It has not been going his way of late. First pitch coming. Here it is. This one's outside quite a bit off the plate that time. And as the Yankees get started here tonight, guys, well, they've been on a pretty good roll of late. Winners of seven of their last eight ball games. Yeah, Maddie, taking a look at the standings right here. This team has a nice lead, comfortable. You always want to find yourself in a position where you're about five to nine Eight. games, got the advantage. You don't. One series isn't going to totally kill you in the standings. And this team, this team's sitting pretty right now. The 1-1. One, one. Takes a pitch for strike number two. Tyon has a reputation as a strike thrower, although that doesn't often result in a ton of strikeouts. A typical start may find him with a low walk total and the ball in play a lot. Matty, he's what they call today one of those pitch to contact kind of guys. He has good stuff, not great stuff. He relies a lot on his defense. And one of the keys, he's not afraid to throw the ball in the strike zone. With that said, he needs some defense behind it because he's not going to get a whole lot of swings and misses. And it's fouled away. The next one two pitch and a half hearted attempt that time but they'll say he broke the plane and that's out number two always tough for one of these base umpires to that make a call on a guy's check swing it's not a great angle and everything that. happens so quickly so they really have to be paying attention out there looking at the replay I think he got it right so that's a tip of the cap for the blue. Next up, Jose Abreu. And as you take a look at the splits here, he's actually better against right handed pitching this season. First pitch on the way. A high fastball is in there. Hey, when you're featuring a mid 90s fastball like this pitcher, attack with that pitch. Get ahead, get the offense on their toes. That opens up the off speed pitches later in the game. Behind 0 2 now. Nothing in two count and the pitch. Ball low as he's able to lay off the slider. Bases are empty here with two men out. Two and two now with two gone here in the home half of the first. That was a nasty sweeping slider right there. If he was able to just catch the corner a little bit, he would have picked up that backwards K. And he'll step on the bag himself and the inning is over. One two three go the White Sox. We are still scoreless. And that sends DJ LeMahieu into the box and the home away splits tell us he's actually quite a bit better hitting on the road than he is at home. Here's the first pitch. Lopez, 28 years old. He's a veteran of seven years at the major league level. Now 
the 1 0. Head to head with Ronaldo Lopez. He's just 1 for 13. And that one yanked just foul. Hit in the air down the right field line. But this is going to wind up a foul ball. The 2 2. Hit on the ground down the first baseline. And he'll take this to the bag himself. And the leadoff man set down to start the second. That is it. The left fielder. Clint Frazier. And stepping in, Clint Frazier. As we take a look there at the difference in his numbers between June and July. Now the first pitch. The fastball here is he'll take a look at ball one, one and oh. One and one the count to Clint Frazier. No score here as we play inning number two. Nope. And he lays off for a ball two and one. Popped him up. Abreu has room in foul territory. He's got it and there are two down now. So the bases are empty here with two gone and that'll bring up Gary Sanchez. First delivery to him. Wind up and the 0 2 pitch. And a fastball swung on and missed, and the side is retired. So the Yanks go 1 2 3. We'll go to the bottom of the second, no score. Now it'll be the four hole hitter Eloy Jimenez. He went hitless last night in a game where his guys could push across only one score. Infield in the overshift here. Now the pitch. The wind up and the 1 0 pitch. And it looked like the fastball got away from him there. So let's take a look at our umpiring crew in this one. Behind the plate is Joe McDonald. Hey, Joe McDonald, he's a tough guy to figure out sometimes, Dero. One inning, he'll be given that inside corner. The next inning, he doesn't give much of that inside corner. His zone fluctuates a lot. You know, Dan? Oh, what a stop on the slide. Hey, now. Batting fifth, the designated hitter, Kester. Hero. And that'll bring up Keston Hura. Two hits and eight tries for the series. He's ready. Here's the first pitch. Hura oh, brings a ton of pop to the plate with him, particularly against right-handed pitching. Some guys don't drive the ball as well when facing a pitcher who throws from the same side that they swing the bat, but that's certainly not the case here. Yeah, this guy just absolutely hammers right-handed pitching. You know, some guys like the ball in, coming towards them, and that's exactly what the righty-on-righty -righty matchup presents itself. A two-seamer in, a four-seamer that leaks out over the plate, a hanging breaking ball. This guy seems to absolutely hammer those. And a fastball misses there, ball four. Batting six, the third baseman, Yoan. Digging in, the switch hitter, Yoan Moncada. As you get a look at his current righty-lefty splits entering play in this one.
wheels and deals. Here's the first pitch fouled off. He's ready. Here's the 0 1. Bottom of the second here with no score. Up high, two and one now. All even now, two and two. Full count now, three and two. We could see the runner in motion here on a 3 2 count with one out. There's a pretty good chance he's going to get a pitch to swing at, and if not, it's ball four, anyways. Now the payoff pitch home. And this is on the ground to short. Could be two. LeMayhew for one. On to first as they get the double play to get him out of the inning. Good guys held in check here. We'll move to the third with no score. At the plate now is Aaron Hicks head to head with Ronaldo Lopez just a two for 14 line so advantage pitcher here in there and it's 0 and 1. I love everything this pitcher's got working right now. He's got presence. He's got great body language on the mound. He's got fastball command and a nice early feel for his off speed stuff. And he fouls this one off. Into the windup. Here comes the 0 2 pitch. Not surprisingly, here, this is on the ground to the right side. Throw to first in time, and the leadoff man is gone to start the third. And with that, we give you a look here at the standings entering play in the AL Central. Next, it'll be Evan White. He's got hits in each of the last five ball games. First offering on its way. And a high strike to begin the at bat. It's 0 and 1. Hey, make no mistake about it. This lineup's going to have to get going and get a little bit more aggressive. This guy's pounding the zone. Right over the top with that curveball, and it's 0 and 2. And he'll try and tempt him with one in the dirt, but he'll hold back here. It's 1 and 2. Good pitch right there with the base is empty. Why not take a shot? Throw that breaking ball in the dirt and see if he'll chase after it. They try to come in with the fastball, but it's too far in, and it's even at two and two. Fastball, strike three called as he couldn't pull the trigger, and there are two away. So the batting order turns over now and set to go. Jorge Polanco struck out in his last trip to the plate. Yeah, but it was a good change up, Matty. Good arm action on that pitch. Look for him to try and stay back a little bit more. Let the ball get a little deeper. Don't be shocked if this pitcher tries to rush a heater right here. That evens it up one and one. Yankee shortstop behind in the count one and two. This pitcher's bringing it with some high velo. You better get that front foot down early and get ready or he's going to throw it right by you. Counts even two and two for Polanco. Swung on and missed and that's the final out of the inning. One, two, three, go the Bombers. Home half of the third coming up. No score. Yeah. 
ready to go for the last half of the inning and coming forward is the switch hitting outfielder Anthony Santander. Infield shifted well to the right here's the first pitch. Big curveball swung on and missed 0 and 1. And he falls behind 0 and 2. And the pitch. And he'll try and tempt him with one in the dirt, but he'll hold back here. It's 1 and 2. Look out. That one almost got away from him. Two and two now. He went with the off speed there once he got him to 0 oh and 2, but now that they both missed, I think we'll see more of a challenge pitch here. You don't have to give in, but you can't be too cute either. Into the windup, here comes the 2 2 pitch. Ground ball right into the shift. And he'll step on first for the out, three unassisted. Batting it. So one down no one aboard and into bat next is Luis Robert. And now the first pitch. The White Sox are still looking to break into the hit column here. Fouled away. Not surprised he's laid on a heater right there just saw an off speed pitch wanted to stay back a little bit too long. Fastball close but he didn't get it two and one. This is foul right side. The two two. Again he sends it out of play. Count all the way full to the White Sox center fielder. Hey, struggling to find the release point of that curveball. That wasn't a very good one. Somehow he's just got to find that field because that's a pitch he's going to need going forward. Bottom of inning number three, nothing, nothing our score. And he takes ball four, so he's on. And as you know, that often means the steal could be in order here. Well, in a scoreless game, you want to do anything you can to jumpstart your offense. With the speed of this guy on first, don't be surprised if he gets the green light here. Ready now is Yosmani Grandal as he'll dig into the left-handed batter's box. Decent, but not great results so far this season from the left side. I know he'd like better, certainly, but he's definitely still a capable hitter in this setup. First pitch coming. Here it is. Robert stands at first with one out. Throw over to the bag and a dive but he's back in. Here comes the 0 1 runners on the move for second pitch is a cold strike the throw not in time as he steals second well when a stolen base is that close it's interesting to check it out on show track and as the numbers come in you'll want to focus on the top speed really good and it paid off there one and two to the White Sox catcher. Hey, that 0 2 fastball wasn't even close, but I'm hit right now. I'm still sitting on that heater. The 1 2. And the White Sox have their first hit of the game. Won't risk it at third, so they're at the corners now with only one away. That's a big at bat from the bottom of the order. Yeah, Matty, right there. Worked himself into a nice situation, got on, on base right there. Now, first and third, rolls the lineup over. Top of the order is licking its chops. And that'll bring up the shortstop, Tim Anderson, as he will take strike one on the fastball here. No balls and a strike. Runners are at first and third, one away. Oh, 
Oh, and he's really getting the better of him now. It's strike two. Big pitch coming up right here. He'd love for a ground ball or a strikeout. Looking to put him away. Here's the 0 2. Tried to throw the fastball by him, but it's high. One and two. I mean, he's coming right after him, Matty. Three fastballs in a row. A swing and a miss for out number two, and a ball he had no chance of making contact with. Well, their chances of pushing across a run took a pretty good hit after that strikeout. It's so much tougher to score a guy from third with two outs instead of one. Basically, you need a hit, or you need to get lucky with a wild pitch or a pass ball. Here's Tommy LaStella now as he takes a cold strike at the knees. It's 0 and 1. 0 for 1 here in the early going. A little quick on that swing, and he finds himself behind 0 and 2. Hey, usually the second time through the order, you start seeing an incorporation of some more off-speed stuff. But this guy's locating, feeling really good about his fastball. Two back-to-back. -back. One ball and two strikes to count. Now a ball lined to the left side. But this will land in foul territory. Still one and two. A ball and two strikes. Weakly hit to third. Reined in. And the inning will end as they're unable to cash in with two outs. White Sox strand a couple. We'll head to the fourth, still scoreless. Now to the plate, Gio Urshela. 0 for 1 for him here in this one. The old adage, Gio. pitching and defense have been stellar so far. They've certainly kept both offenses in check. As he'll watch a slider that stays inside for ball one. Ball hit on the ground for Anderson at short. He's got it. Throw to first in time. One gone here in the fourth. So bases are empty with one gun, and that'll bring up the exciting middle infielder, Glaber Torres. Now here's the first offering. It's been more than two innings since this guy's allowed anyone to reach base. He looks pretty unbeatable on the bump right now. And a pitch in the dirt as he lays off. It's one and one. Just one hit apiece for both of these clubs. Pretty well struck high and deep to left field. Looking up is Jimenez. Gone! A solo shot here to left, number 28 on the season, as the Yankees will grab a one to nothing lead. Right now, he can't wait to get to the plate against this pitching staff. Four home runs in this series. Bet he wishes he could play these guys every single day. Here's big Aaron Judge. As the first pitch to him is in there for a called strike one. He's 0 for 1 thus far. High fly ball out to straightaway center. Center fielder on the run. He gets there and makes a fine running play for the second out. So two are gone now in the Yankee half of the fourth and that'll bring up D.J. LeMahieu. First pitch on its way. He'll swing and lift a ball fouled off to the left and out of play. Two out nobody on. 
hit to third. Throw over to Abreu is in time and with it the side is retired. One scores in the inning coming on this solo home run. Bottom of the fourth coming up. It's now 1-0 New York. Back with Mark DeRosa and Dan Plesak, Matt Vaskersian as Jose Abreu is ready to start out the inning. Jose Abreu. Here's the first pitch to him. This guy's been throwing the ball great so far, but he's going to be tested here. Four, five, and six coming up this part of the lineup. A ball and a strike now to Jose Abreu. Two and one the count to the White Sox first baseman. Three balls and a strike to the Chicago leadoff hitter. Hey, throwing the ball great up into this point. Don't want to allow a leadoff walk. Needs to just focus in on his mechanics right here. Swing, strike two. I think it's safe to say he wasn't ready for the fastball. Wow, was he behind that fastball. Great job on the mound using the curveball to set up the heater. And they could go either way now, I suppose. And that misses for ball four. It's a leadoff walk that starts the bottom of the fourth. Well, they haven't been able to scratch a run across yet, so maybe this walk will jumpstart their offense a little bit. Next will be the cleanup hitter, Elo Jimenez. He's 0 for 1 after grounding out in his only trip to the plate so far. Yeah, Matty, expect this pitcher to try and get the same result as his last at bat right here. The double play is in order. Anything on the ground, the way this defense is, they could certainly roll too. Here comes the 1 0. Fastball was too much for him there. Swung right through it. Hit down the line at first. Here comes the 1 2. Yeah, you could tell he was ready for another fastball, but the pitcher went to breaking ball, and the hitter just fouls that one off. Swung on and lifted in the air to left center. Frazier will settle under it to make the play for the first out, as the runner will have to head back to first. Now that is so one well, gun in the inning here with the runner at first, and in at the plate steps Keston Huron. Comes set. Here's the nothing and nothing pitch. In there for strike one. Hey, he's got great feel for that pitch right there. He can throw it anytime he wants for a strike. And a check swing here as he couldn't help himself, and it's ruled strike two. I think a big reason why he's been so effective in this one that he's been just about getting ahead of every hitter. Seems like every one of them are 0-2, 1-2, and, and it's just about every at bat. And when that's the case, your chances of getting a good pitch to hit are way worse. Smoked on the ground left side. And that'll just sneak past his outstretched arm, a base hit. Well, there's a case, not that bad of a pitch, 0-2 D-Roll, but something he'd like to get down and bury in the strike zone, no doubt about it. Yeah, ground ball with eyes right there. Nice job by the offensive player. Just just to battle. 0-2's a tough spot to be in. He battled. Next to bat will be the Cuban import, Yon Moncada. No balls and a strike to count. From the stretch. Nope. And that misses one and one. In the dirt here. 
Runners may have thought about it but they'll stay put and the count moves to two and one. Come set now the pitch on a good pitch there had him stretching to get out there and it's two and two now. Hey, would like to see a little bit more discipline than that. You get a count in your favor, he's swinging a pitch that bad? Not good. Here now the 2-2. Two -two. I don't think he can afford another base runner here, so whatever pitch he feels best about, whichever one he feels most comfortable with, that's the one I expect him to turn to. And he misses with it, ball four, so that'll load the bases, and now he's really going to need to get a ground ball. Wow, you know he's not happy with that call. When it crossed the plate, it sure looked like a strike to me. Seemed to catch a ton of the plate. That's a tough way to give up a walk, but he's got to put it behind him now. Anthony Santander, the next to bat. As the first pitch to him runs a bit inside for ball one. Comes into this at bat 0 for 1 in the ball game. And that's into the corner a foul ball in right. Obviously a huge situation in the game here. But at the plate, he's got to keep it simple. He can't try to do too much just because the bases are juiced. At the very least, just find a way to get that tying run home from third. A swinging bunt up the third baseline. And he'll hang in here as he reaches to foul this one away. Open to send him packing. Pitch on its way. And a strike three called. My gracious, what a pitch with the bases loaded. And there are two away now. Big curveball for the strikeout there. And that came after an absolute missile of a fastball. Even if you recognize the breaking ball out of the pitcher's hand, it's so hard for hitters to sit back long enough after they've seen a really good fastball. Only the best can keep their hands back on those. The batter will be Luis Robert. As he looks at a fastball that's in there for strike one. He drew a base on balls his first time up. He's set the 0 1. He's already walked two in this inning already. This guy just can't seem to find the strike zone. Ball and two strikes now. And a slider runs away from him there, and the count levels at two and two. Two and two. Here it is. And this is swung on and missed as the 30th pitch of this inning finally does the trick. The side is retired. Clearly fired up to work out of that jam. More of MLB Network Saturday baseball after this. All ready to go in the top of the fifth. And next it'll be the outfielder, Clint Frazier. Here's the first pitch to him. He swings and hits it foul off to the right and out of play. The wind up and the 0 1. One and one. Swing and a liner, but a foul ball. One and two the count now. 
Yanked the slider across that time, laid off for a ball. Going to need to make a little bit of an adjustment with a slider release and at least tempt the hitter that it's going to be a strike. And here's three. a slider strike three called, and that'll be the first out of the inning. That's what you call clipping the outside corner. Up next Great inning. movement on that slider, and it completely locked Gary up the hitter. Didn't Sanders. fool the umpire, though. Stepping in now, Gary Sanchez. As he'll take one up in the zone, but indeed in the strike zone for the first strike. Struck out in his first at bat. A swing by Sanchez, and this one soaring out into left field. And gone! An absolute bomb. It's a solo shot here for Gary Sanchez. Home run number 16 for him on the year, and this is now a 2 to nothing lead for the Yankees. You want to certainly drive home runs out of the ballpark, then you better get on the gas. And that's what he did right there. That fastball was not sneaking by him. Standing in now, Aaron oh, Hicks. The center field. Pulled toward right Aaron center field. Hicks. Robert is there as he had to travel a ways, but he makes the catch deep in the alley for the second out. Now batting. Two down, no one on base. Evan. And up next is Evan White. He's ready. Here's the first pitch. Hit hard down the line. That's through for a base hit, and he's one for two now. Throw into second. The tag, and they'll get him at second. And with that, the side is retired. Yanks able to add on one more via the solo home run. Middle of the night from guaranteed rate field. It's now 2 nothing New York. Welcome back to the South Side as we check in with Heidi. Well, Matt, I had a chance to discuss the state of the White Sox offense with their manager in between innings. And flat out, he was very pleased with the quality of their at-bats. He cited the four walks they've earned already as evidence that his guys are waiting for the right pitch and that they're willing to let the opposition work themselves into trouble. So far, that's paying off. Okay, thank you, Heidi. And here's the switch hitting catcher, Yasmani Grandal. He leads off in the bottom of the fifth as they look to break through on the scoreboard for the first time in this one. Yeah, no doubt about it. You can tell in between innings, the veterans in that dugout going up and down the line, trying to keep this lineup from getting super frustrated. They just have to find a way to piece it together, maybe pass the baton, get some wheels in motion, maybe get aggressive on the base pass if they can get somebody on. Now here's the pitch. Oh, this one bounces off the pitcher. And they'll have no play as he reaches first base safely. And time now to see quite the where that got seven. him. And it appeared Short from stop. up here at least, and his here. actions on the field confirm Anderson. it. It looked like it got him on his drive leg, which could be problematic, of course, for him. But from the way he's trying to walk it off, I think he's going to try to continue. Back to the top of the order now, and up next it'll be Tim Anderson. Ready to deal. Here comes the first pitch. Double barreled action in the Yankee bullpen now. A lefty and a right hander start to get loose. Swing and a little blooper to center. Coming on for it is Hicks, but he won't get there. It falls in. 
That can't bother you too bad, Dan, right there. Power guy at the plate, and you're able to get in his kitchen. Boy, that, that's a Call tough me. one to swallow, right? These big, strong guys, they like to get their arms extended. That wasn't that bad of a pitch, but he's just so strong that he's able to muscle that into the outfield grass. Now into the box, Tommy LaStella, and he's looking to make something happen here with two on and nobody out. Well, early in the count, expect him to look for a ball to drive. If he gets two strikes against him, he'll need to change his plan and focus on moving the runners up. This game is too close to get greedy. From the stretch, here's the pitch. And it's fouled away. According to the career numbers on the back of his baseball card, La Stella has a slugging percentage a little over 425, a respectable number. Nothing in one count. Here it comes. Behind 0 and 2 now. Hey, I noticed pitcher's getting ahead right here. He's got the hitter down 0 2. But to this guy in the box, might want to just live on the corners a little bit more. You keep missing down the middle, something's not coming back. Line to the right side. That's in there. Base hit. And they're content to play station to station here as the bases are loaded now with still nobody out. The bat. Boy, Dero, we're looking at a big okay. inning right here with that single. Bases are loaded, yet no runs have scored in this inning. Yeah, and that's exactly what that pitcher wants you to think. You have to eliminate the noise, Dan. Just try and drive in the guy from third base. Don't put pressure on yourself that you have to get everyone in with one swing of the bat. Pass the baton and keep the line moving. Here's the first pitch to him. A swinging bunt out in front of the plate. He takes it to the plate. There's one on to first, and they turn the double play. Next, it'll be Eloy Jimenez trying here to plate the tying run from second. He's set. Here it comes. High in the air down the right field line. Heading after it is Judge, and no one will track it down. That's in there, and he's deep in the hole now, 0-2. On 0-2 here, he doesn't have to give in with a great pitch to hit. He's got a base open, so he has to focus on making a good pitch right here. And he's down on strikes, so they get two men into scoring position, but that's as far as they'll get as the side is retired. White Sox strand a couple. They trail it here two to nothing. Now at the plate here is Jorge Polanco. He'll try and get things started as we begin inning number six. First pitch of the A.B. on its way. Outside target here and he hits it for strike one. Just a bit late and he's fallen behind 0 and 2. Nothing in two count and the pitch. As a hitter you got to be staunch in your game plan. You know he has a nasty change up and you got to fight to make sure it's in the zone. That's a great take right there. Just hung in there on that one. And he'll lay off the curveball that's in the dirt that time, and it's back to even now at two and two. This is a fun guy to watch when he's up there, really battles, doesn't take any pitches off. He's a grinder, always seems to make it difficult on the opposing pitcher. Two two pitches fouled away. And another foul ball. The 2 2. Okay. He's definitely going to want to get greedy in his own, and he's obviously seeing the ball well, or he would have swung at that pitch. Sometimes in these long, epic at bats, 
you start to get into swing mode. Now the three and two pitch. Count remains full. Another payoff pitch. Fouled off. The next three, two. Tough pitch to lay off, but he did, and it's ball four, so the leadoff hitter is aboard to start the sixth. And that at bat will now put a smile on any manager's face. The pitch total of the opposing pitcher just keeps going higher and higher, and he still couldn't put him away. So this inning is off to a good start for the guys carrying the sticks. Next to dig in, Gio Urshela. He grounded out last time up. First pitch on its way. Some action now in the White Sox bullpen. They'll stand up a lefty and a right hander to throw. Now a throw over, and he'll get back in safely. In for a strike, it's one and one. Wow, I'm shocked the hitter took it right there. That's a well executed pitch down in the zone to try and get that double play. Called strike on the inside, and he can't believe it at the plate. It's one and two now. Take a step back right here. After three fastballs in a row, there is no chance he throws you a fourth. Well outside with the curveball for a ball. Polanco gets his lead at first, nobody out. 2-2 Two -two pitch is a fastball high, so it runs full, three and two. One of the things you want to do with a starter, get that pitch count up. Here's another productive at bat as this count now gets to three balls and two strikes. Grounded to the right. And that's through for a hit. And that runner will hold up at second with two aboard now. Boy, that's one of the, I guess, the advantages of hitting with that hole between first and second base, D-Row. First baseman has to hold that runner on. That leaves that right side wide open. Yeah, and credit the batter right there. Nice piece of hitting right there. Not trying to do too much. He took a look at the defense and saw it where it was aligned and tried to beat him. So now the White Sox manager will slowly make his way toward the mound and a change is forthcoming as that's going to do it for his starter here this evening. He'll wind up lasting just five innings here didn't pitch all that poorly yet he's gone nonetheless. Garrett Crochet takes over on the mound here with nobody out in the sixth inning. And that'll bring up Glaber Torres. On a line, that's a base hit into left field. Long throw to the plate. The throw here is not in time. He beats Grandal's tag. Hey, with that base hit right now, the lead's 3 0. And the way their pitcher is going, D Row, that might hold up in this one. Yeah, and you're well aware of it, Dan, as an offense, just trying to put those extra runs across the board. You can take a look at the guy on the slab, towing the slab. He's on fire right now. So now to the plate Aaron Judge as he will look at a first pitch fastball for ball one. He's hitless in his two at bats so far. The 1 0 home is swung on and missed strike one. Swing and a miss on a nasty slider right there. Always felt toughest pitch in the game. If you're a guy who liked to work the big part of the field, you were on that fastball middle away. But that slider looked like a heater for about 56 feet, six inches.
Here's the one and two. We just saw a fastball right there. I would not be shocked if he tries to get this guy to go fishing right here and drops a little off speed pitch in the dirt. Here now the 2 2. Well, you don't see it all that often, but this might be a good time for a 3 2 change. If he can locate it, it's nearly impossible to hit. Working for the punch out and the offering. Hit in the air down the left field line. Jimenez ranges into foul territory as he makes the catch out near the wall for out number one. Next for New York, DJ LeMayhew. He's rolled into ground outs a couple of times already here in the ballgame. Here's the first pitch as he lays off a fastball too low for ball one. Well above the letters with the fastball that time. Great chance right here as a hitter to be really aggressive. With two guys already on, pretty good shot. He's going to get a challenge pitch right here. Three and oh now. Three runs, six hits, and no errors for the Yankees so far. And he misses with that one. Ball four, and that's going to load the bases now with still only one away. It was obvious when the count ran to 2-0 and that they were not going to give this guy anything to hit. Sometimes you have to pick your battles, and they're going to try their luck with the next hitter. So bases are loaded. Nowhere to put him with one away. And that'll bring up the outfielder Clint Frazier. First delivery to him. Maybe trying to back him up a bit there with the fastball. Bases are loaded here. One man out. Two and zero to the Yankees left fielder. Nowhere to put anybody. Two zero count. Not a good spot to be in as a pitcher. Has a look. Now the pitch. And he gets this fastball over. It's two and one. Ooh, that was some gas. Triple digits on the radar gun. Bases are loaded with only one out. Three and one. It often becomes harder to hit the zone when the pressure starts to heat up. Takes a cold strike at the knees, and that'll run things full. Swing and a miss, and they'll dodge a major bullet that time. Two away. Striding in is Gary Sanchez. He comes in one for two with that home run he hit earlier. And that home run he hit his last time up, he isn't going to forget about anytime soon. He absolutely destroyed a fastball. And now the first pitch. Now a fastball on the inside corner, and he takes a look at strike one. So important getting ahead with the bases loaded. Already a difficult situation, so you don't want to make it any harder by falling behind in the count. Comes set, the 0 1. Fastball, and he's quickly in the hole, 0 and 2. He put himself in a good position jumping ahead, 0 and 2 with the bases loaded. Now we'll see if he can finish it off. Now the 0 and 2. 
All over that one, but a little out in front. Foul ball. And he fouls this one off. One and two to the Yankees catcher. Slider just about gets away from him there as it runs in a bit too close for comfort. We can't hear it from here, obviously, but I think someone in the dugout just yelled, wear it, because that could have been a run. Two and two. Here it is. For the guy in the mound, this is one of those innings where nothing comes easy. He's thrown a bunch of pitches, and this A.B. hasn't been any different. Definitely laboring at the moment. Making him work out there. The ninth pitch of the at-bat coming up. Pulled high in the air out to left field. Waiting on it is Jimenez. And they'll avoid the big inning as he makes the catch, so just the one run scores here in the frame. Yankees forced to settle for one. Bottom of the sixth inning now, and standing in is the DH, Keston Hiura. The designated hitter, Keston Hiura. Here's the first pitch. Looked like he tried to pull it there, but he swings right through the fastball. This is why the manager pencils these guys in the middle of the order. Big spot. Time for them to get back in this game with a couple quality ABs. The wind up and the 0 2 pitch. And a fastball in the dirt that's taken for a ball. Not a real good pitch there, 0 and 2. Probably not what he was trying to do with that fastball. He was trying to miss probably up and away, and he threw that one down into the dirt on an 0 2 pitch. Very rarely are you going to get hitters to chase an 0 2 fastball now that's down in the dirt. Third baseman, Yoan Moncada. So here's Yoan Moncada. As the first pitch misses to him, it's ball one. It was a walk in his last trip. The 1 0. Yep, that ball went out. It's a lot easier to hit when you're putting yourself in good hitters counts. This guy's done a great job not swinging at pitchers pitches and when he's getting the ball in the zone he's getting the barrel to it. He's been hot lately. Two and one now. Into the windup and the pitch. Hit sharply on the ground. Oh, a diving effort as it's off his glove. Throw will not be in time at first. A good effort that time, but not enough to prevent them from getting a one out base runner. The right field. Nice effort by the shortstop right there. Kept it in front of him. That's, a, that's all he could do right there, Dan. You know, deal in a spot like that, that's an infield single. That's a tough play. Just to knock that ball down was a pretty good job, but any way you look at it, that should be scored a base hit, and I'm sure it was. At the plate, Anthony Santander. And so take a look at ball one. 0 for 2 from him so far in this one. Ready with the 1 0 pitch. Nope, Moncada, the runner at first with one gone in the inning. Throw over to the bag and the runner back.
Now the 2 0. Outside, 3 and 0 now. That's on the outer edge, 3 and 1. Both teams with six hits so far. Fouled away. Now a move over to first, just keeping him close. Lofted in the air out toward right center. Judge is on his horse. He tracks it down and makes the play to record the second out. So it's a runner at first with two men out, and that brings up Luis Robert. Has a look, now the pitch. As the first pitch to him is swung on and missed for strike one. Hey, this guy's got to be pretty proud of what he's done so far. It's never easy to pitch on the road, but to have this kind of outing in a ballpark that is notoriously known as being hitter friendly, it's been a treat to watch. The 0 1 on its way. A ball and a strike. A couple of lefties start to get loose now in the bullpen. No runs on six hits and no errors so far for the White Sox. And now a fastball but he's able to hold off on it and it's two and one now. Out in front here is this one scorched foul to the left. Think he was sitting on that pitch right there. He absolutely smoked that ball. You could tell the grimace on his face that he wanted to keep that one fair. Again, another foul ball. The 2 2 one more time. Popped up. White is there for it. And he makes the play to end the inning. A man left for the White Sox, still down 3 0. Tyler Thornburg is on to pitch from the bullpen now to start inning number seven. Seventh inning ready to roll, and that'll bring in the switch hitter, Aaron Hicks. The center fielder, Aaron Hicks. Ready to deliver. Here comes the first pitch. There's not too many umpires in the game that are going to ring that first strike right there. That was borderline up, even though it was in the zone. The 1 1 is swung on and missed, and that's strike two. That's a real nice location with that fastball up and in on the hands. Hard to do much with that because a hitter really can't extend his arms very easily. The one two. He's certainly pushing the throttle and pulling it with those four pitches. Statistics class tells me I'm sitting fast. Now he spins on one here and drives it to deep right field. Santander on the run. On the warning track, he makes the catch. The first base is number 12. Stepping in once Evan. again is Evan White. He's one for two in the ball game. First pitch of the A.B. now. Tried to check it and it's 0 and 1. Bases are empty one man out. Here's a fastball that crowds him a bit and it's 1 and 1. And 
and a check swing here as he couldn't help himself and it's ruled strike two. The one two. Gets him looking at the knees for the strikeout. Well, we've seen some really good pitching from these guys in this one. The bullpen has looked sharp and have backed up a nice effort turned in by the starter. These days, pitching has become a full staff effort, and I've been impressed with the job these guys have done so far. At the plate now, Jorge Polanco. Batting left-handed here as he takes a look at strike one. No hits to this point. On its way, the 0 1 pitch. And he lays oh, off for ball back. one. Bases are empty here with two men out. One and two now as that one's fouled off. Into the windup and the pitch. Nope. Most good pitchers know that they have to work inside and sometimes even come off the plate to keep hitters from getting comfortable up there. I think that was part of the intent with that last pitch. Ready on two balls and two strikes. Here it comes. Just off the outside that time laid off for a ball. Well all of the umpires in the seats thought that would strike three and they weren't far off but I think that was a good call look to be just a bit outside. As anticipated, here's a ground ball now to the right side. Throw over to Abreu is in time, and with it, the side is retired. Pretty painless half of the inning, all told. Stretch time here on the south side of Chicago. It's the Yankees three, and the White Sox nothing. Luis Sessa will come on now as he'll be appearing in his 45th game this year. Here's the catcher, Yasmani Grandal. Two base Robert hits, both White singles Sox. to this point. The catcher, Yasmani Grandal. First pitch on its way. Nothing in one count. Here it comes. Didn't quite catch the zone there. Ball one. Two and one. Grandal with a three and one count now. You could pretty much book it that a fastball's coming. A challenge fastball right here. He cannot allow the nine hole hitter to get on base with the top of the order looming. And he goes against the shift there as this is on the ground at the left side. He's through first and hustling for second. And he is in the second with a double, his third hit of the night. Managers these days like to think of that nine hole hitter as the second leadoff man and he plays the role pretty well right here gets the leadoff double and now he gives the real leadoff man a chance to bring him home. And the next to bat will be Tim Anderson strike one to start the at bat. He's got a hit in three at bats to this point. That's in there, and he's deep in the hole now, 0 and 2. What a nasty pitch right there. Batter thought it was going to hit him, and it ends up breaking into the zone for a strike. Check swing, but he held up in time, ball one. That's a great job of holding up right there. You have two strikes on you. You're trying to protect the plate. It's difficult to not get super aggressive at the plate. The one two. 
swing and he pops him up and no one can get there it's a foul ball. Here's another one two and he takes strike three called on the fastball one gone. Digging in will be Tommy LaStella, and he's got to get on base any way he can with that possible tying run behind him in the on deck circle. He's ready. Here's the first pitch. And he'll take a look at a slider here that misses for ball one. And it's fouled away. Grandal, the runner at second with one away. And this is taken for a cold strike, and he's not in love with that call either. It's one and two now. And a wave and a miss on a ball that was way out of the strike zone. There are two away now. Now after back to back strikeouts he's got a real good chance of making that leadoff double pretty much meaningless. He's made some good pitches and these hitters have really failed driving him in or at least getting him over. So here's the slugging first baseman Jose Abreu now as he swings and grounds it toward the hole. And that's by him into right field for a base hit. And they throw up the stop sign at third as they decide to play it safe with two away. Hey, this might be their best opportunity to at least get on the board. They've been struggling offensively, and they find themselves with two runners on board. Let's see if they can continue it. Up next for Chicago, Elo Jimenez. And Dan, this could be a real make-or-break situation at this point in the game. Yeah, Matt, at least scoring one run in this inning is so important to them to possibly get back into this thing. Baseball doesn't have a clock, but you only have 27 outs to work with. They're running out of those pretty quick. First pitch on the way. Very weakly on the ground. Ready with the nothing and one pitch. With runners on base, two outs and two strikes, this is a big next pitch for both sides. Runners at the corners, two men out. Ball one as he lays off below the zone. That's a great take right there. You knew the pitcher was going to try and expand the zone. 0 2 in a big spot, and he was able to spit on that one. Hopefully, get something in the heart of the plate this pitch. Here comes the one two. Wow this is a pretty good at bat right here from down in the count 0 and 2 to work the count back to 3 and 2 and he's seen a lot of pitches too. Payoff pitch home. Hit hard on the ground towards second. Throw on to first, and the White Sox come up with nothing as the inning is over. White Sox strand a couple. They trail in this one, 3 0. Jimmy Cordero has been summoned from the bullpen as he'll do so to start the eighth. Number 50. Ready to begin the eighth, and that'll give way to the third baseman, Gio Urshela. Gio Urshela. He's set, and the pitch. This is on the ground over to first. Fielded by Abreu, and a step on first himself for the out. Now to bat, Glaber Torres. He's gone deep again in this game, despite facing some fierce competition on the mound. This is one of the premier power hitters in the game. He's already gone deep once in this game against great pitching. Wouldn't be surprised if he catches something over the heart of the plate again. Ready with the first pitch. Here it comes. 
And a high strike there, 0 and 1. Action in the White Sox bullpen now as they have a left hander getting loose. Here's the 0 1 pitch. That's a ball. Bouncer to the left side. La Stella bare hands it. How about that? So next to hit is Aaron Judge. He's hitless in three at bats to this point. From the stretch, pitch taken several inches below the zone, in fact. Two balls and no strikes. Big cut at the 2 0 slider, but he comes up empty, two and one. Two out, nobody on. Two balls and two strikes now. Here now the 2 2. He is swung on and missed. He got him on strikes. So the Yanks go 1 2 3. They lead it 3 to nothing. So a new pitcher is set to take over now and here he is the fireballing left hander Aroldis Chapman. Bottom of inning number eight set to go and striding forward the designated hitter Keston Hiura. Chapman's ready. First pitch on its way. Ball, that's too high. And now action in the bullpen as their closer starts to get loose out there. Ball, that's Two and oh now. Well, this is a spot you'd like to be in. 2 0, good hitter. He's going to turn it loose right here. And here's a fastball for a strike. Two and one now. Hard hit ball to second. LeMay here with a great stop. It's there. He got him. Big league play in the hole right there. And that's a pretty good example of why getting hits at this level is so difficult. You know he was running down the line thinking, for real? You got to be kidding me. Into the box, Johan Moncada. As the first pitch here's a bit high, it's ball one. Got to find a way to scratch at least one across. You do not want to take on the monster closing the game down three. Two balls and no strikes. The count to Johan Moncada. Here comes the 2-0 pitch. Two balls and a strike. When I broke into the league, not many guys were throwing that elevated fastball with that much velocity on it. The game has changed. Now here's the pitch. On oh, a good pitch there, had him stretching to get out there, and it's two and two now. Usually you see chases outside the zone on off-speed stuff like sliders, breaking balls, and change-ups. But to chase a fastball that far outside the zone tells me this hitter's not seeing it well at all. Fouled off. One out, nobody on. And 
And he fouls this one off. And they're working the outer half here, but that one's wide for ball three. You can certainly tell at bats like this one, frustrate the heck out of a pitcher. But you got to find a way to stay composed and execute your plan. And he finally wins the battle as this is swung on and missed for the second out. Well, we'll see a lot of these power arms coming out of the bullpen in these days, but it doesn't make it any less impressive to me. I love watching guys come in and blow smoke right by guys. Digging in next, Anthony Santander. Two away here in the eighth, and time's running out on him, Danny. Yeah, they don't have a lot of outs left to work with, so it's time for someone to make something happen if they're going to get back into this thing. First pitch coming, here it is. Well, Lifetime line against Chapman. He's one for four. The 1 0. What a well executed fastball right there, down and away. If you're going to do any damage with that pitch, you have to think up the middle the other way, and you have to be diving and leaning out over nope, that thing. That's a ball. And he takes ball two, and it's two and one. To two and two now. Now the pitch. And a fastball swung on and missed as they set him down for the second time here tonight. Down in order go the White Sox. They trail it here three to nothing. Liam Hendricks enters the game from the pen and because this is a non save situation it's evident that they're just trying to get him some work after having not thrown in several days. Yeah and this is all about just getting him some work guys he hasn't a chance to come in and close a game out for several days now so they're just hoping they can keep him sharp and give him the chance to pitch in a real game situation here. He comes set here's the nothing and nothing pitch. 0 and 1 the count. The pitch. And that finds the target. Nothing in two now. Now a ball hit hard toward first. Ah, but that finds the first baseman's glove, and that's a now tough that first out. The left fielder. Up next, Clint Frazier. 0 for 3 with a couple of strikeouts for him to this point in the ballgame. Ready to deliver. Here comes the first pitch. One oh home. Like to see him be looking to the opposite field with this next swing. Pitchers trying to work you away. Bases are empty, one man out. Hit hard on the ground a second. Listella has it. And there are two away now. So now into the box is Gary Sanchez. He went deep back in the fifth. First pitch of the AB on its way. Curveball looked at here for strike one. Great pitch right there. That is a huge breaking ball. Not shocked he took it. Got to calibrate that one for a second. Ball one. Bases are empty here with two men out. Oh, 
No offer on that one. Two balls and a strike. Now the 2 1. Ball that's up there. There's ball four. Now batting, the center fielder, Aaron Hicks. So it's a runner at first with two men out, and that'll bring up the switch hitter, Aaron Hicks. From the belt, the pitch. First pitch hack in here, and that's the first strike. Hey, that's a well-executed pitch right there. That might have started middle, but you saw it breaking away to that outer part of the zone. This left-handed batter right here has got two decisions to make. Is he going to ground out to second base all day, or is he going to drive the ball the other way? One and one. And he misses with it, one and one. Ball Fastball down. just missed above the zone. Two balls and two strikes to Hicks now. And he struck him out. So a good pitch there. And now they're going to need to string some hits together in this last at-bat if they want to get back in this thing. So no runs on no hits, no errors, and one man left on base. So nothing in the Bombers' ninth. Last chance now for the White Sox. They trail here three to nothing. Chad Green enters the game to finish this one off here in the bottom of the ninth. The next batter will be Luis Robert. He's going to lead things off in their half of the ninth as they try to avoid the dreaded shutout. It's never a good feeling to get shut out. And over the course of the season, it's bound to happen a few times. They've just been overmatched by good pitching. Ready to deal. Here comes the first pitch. Fouled away. Set. Here's the 0-1. Good pitch there down below the zone. Got him to go after it. Got him to chase after the curveball below the zone there. That was a really nice pitch, and it can be a really tough one to lay off of as a hitter. Swing and a miss, and that'll get a groan from the home supporters here. One away. So the leadoff man gone to start the top of the ninth as we take a look at league saves leaders entering play. And as you can see, he's right up there, fourth in the AL in that category. Now to the plate, here is Yosmani Grandal. He's got three hits, including a double to this point. First pitch coming, here it is. Green has tossed over 30 innings so far this season, and through those innings, he's worked to a whip under 1.20. League average is around 1.3, so that's a respectable number. Way inside with that one, a pretty easy take there. Pretty good pitch right there. Fastball in off the plate. One of the things you want to do as a pitcher, try to stand those hitters up. And it's fouled away. Oh, and that man. one misses badly. It's ball two. One out, nobody on.
And he lays off, so it's full now, three and two. Tim Anderson will be next. Crowd gets up for the three two and it's another K. so back to back strikeout victims to start this relief outing. Well you have to feel pretty confident about the way this one's going to end up as a manager. Two hitters two strikeouts from the closer. There's not a whole lot more he can do to instill confidence that he's going to wrap this thing up without any problem. Into the box now Tim Anderson as he will take strike one on the fastball here no balls and a strike he's got one hit in four at bats on its way the 0 1 pitch two out nobody on. Good pitch as this is swung on and missed and now they're down to perhaps their final strike of the evening. I'll tell you if I'm pitching right now I'm not throwing anything near the strike zone until these guys prove they can lay off it. They're just being way too aggressive. Count even at two and two. The White Sox down to their last strike. High in the air down the right field line. Heading after it is Judge, and he tracks it down, and this ball game is over. Hey, it sure feels good to shut somebody out. This was a 3 nothing game that featured a lot of great pitching and timely hitting, which made the difference in this one. And tonight's ends as a 3 nothing shutout win. New York took the lead in the fourth and held on until the end. Jamison Tyon earns his eighth victory of the season. Chad Green wraps it up for the save, his 27th of the campaign. So that just about does it for Mark DeRosa, Dan Plezak, Heidi Watney down on the field, and the rest of our crew. I'm Matt Vaskersian. Thanks for watching MLB Network. Our final line score tonight, first for the victorious Yankees, three runs.